Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the argument from efficient causes. This has some similarities to the argument from motion in terms of what kind of evidence there is to support it, so here goes. Premise 1. In the world that we can detect with our senses, there is a causal order where everything is caused by something else. Premise 2. The causal order can't be infinite in the past because without a first cause of everything else, nothing would ever be caused. Premise 3. Nothing can ever cause itself because in order to do so, it would need to be causally prior to itself, which is impossible. Conclusion. Therefore, there must be a first uncaused cause which brings other things about. Now let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. This is pretty clearly true. The things that we can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch are all contingent things and are all caused by other things. Things like clouds, drawings, people, animals, plants, stars, galaxies, and so on. Each is caused by something else. Premise 2. As with motion, a causal chain can't begin unless something begins it. Also, you can't have an infinite number of finite causes in a chain, which is another similarity between these last two arguments. Premise 3. This one's pretty obvious. Things can have a necessary existence, but it can't cause itself to exist. That's just impossible. Conclusion. The first premise tells us that the sensible world contains a causal order. The first two premises tell us that it's a finite causal order. By itself, this tells us that at least one cause must be first, since if there were no first cause, there wouldn't be a finite causal order. The third premise helps to tell us what kind of thing the first cause is, that it's an uncaused cause because it can't be caused by itself or by anything else. This seems like a very good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. It may seem like every sensible thing is caused by something else, but there might be some sensible thing that isn't. Reply. As with the first objection to the argument from motion, I just don't see any reason for assuming this, until we actually encounter something like that and have some evidence of it. Then we'd need to alter premise 1 a little, but in the meantime, premise 1 remains reasonable and valid. Objection 2. The first cause of everything doesn't need to be God, it could be something else. Reply. Again, whatever the first cause is, it would need to be voluntary for the same reasons as with the prime mover from the last argument. If it does things voluntarily, it must be able to make choices, and therefore have free will. So if that's not what's meant by God, then I'd like to know what would be. So it follows that a first cause of some sort must exist, which is a good piece of evidence to indicate that God exists. Next time, can the potential to exist teach us anything about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.